Hello and welcome to the Burn KC Scorchcast. My name is Alex Blackburn coming to you live from my kitchen. Uh, sorry for not getting the Scorchcast out on time on its normal Sunday evening time slot. Um, I was up in Iowa visiting my dad and doing some farm work, so in a little manual labor day. Um, and was up there, had a good dinner with him, and uh, it was nice to see him after a couple months. Uh, so very, very happy I got to see my dad uh, this weekend. So that was pretty nice. And when I got home, I had a ton of homework to do. The life of a grad student never ceases um, in a uh, productivity sense. Um, it's great. It's awesome. Uh, but it's worth it. It's worth it. I promise it's worth it. Anyway. <laughs> um, had a pretty loaded show today. Uh, got a lot to talk about. Um, after being gone for only a day over normal scheduled time. Uh, we got um, a couple things regarding some college basketball of Kansas, Missouri, and K-State. Got some transfer targets for each school. Got uh, a little bit of next year's expectations of what to look for ahead. Uh, Obviously, all three schools are out of the tournament at this point, um, unfortunately. Um, But we... Still got a lot to talk about regarding them. Uh, the off season for college basketball is normally pretty busy, so we'll go ahead and get into that. Uh, got a few things regarding the Kansas City Royals. Um, they are starting regular season play this week on Thursday uh, is opening day, so it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a great Royal season. Um, It'll be better than last year. I, I would certainly hope so. Uh, but we'll talk about, you know, what to expect there. Um, a couple of different things in regard to that. Uh, we also got some Chiefs news. Um, obviously, we got to take a good hard look at the wide receiver room um, and whether or not, you know, anybody will get added there before the draft. We will also be talking about said draft and seeing – who exactly uh, the Chiefs will be going with. Um, and then uh, there's also some some certain uh, legal troubles that a certain uh, Chiefs fan has uh, gotten themselves into, and uh, it's not looking good. Uh, but, again, more on that later. And some Sporting Kansas City news, some Blues news, and other rugby news as well. Um, and some women's basketball and women's soccer news. So stay tuned. Wrap in. It'll be a good one. All right. Starting out with college basketball and starting with my alma mater, Kansas. Uh, Kansas had a very underwhelming year. Let's just be honest here. They did. Um, In terms of postseason play, at least. Uh, Obviously, the regular season set the record for quad one wins um, and had a National Player of the Year candidate in Jalen Wilson and a couple other really, really good players like Grady Dick and Dewan Harris. Um, but unfortunately, couldn't get past Arkansas. Uh, lost to them by a point in the, the second round of the NCAA tournament. Very unfortunate. Um, but that doesn't mean next year is going to be unfortunate unless Bill Self, for some reason, can't coach anymore, which is actually kind of a possibility. Um, but, sorry I put that in the air, Kansas fans. Um, you know, with heart issues, it's it's kind of hard to judge, unfortunately. And you hope that he's okay. Um, but his health does come first. And not that I'm saying, oh, he will retire, but there is that chance. Um, I doubt that he will. So just, I doubt that he will. Uh, especially with all the rest that he's going to get in the offseason. But that being said, 
Uh, players have already entered the transfer portal from KU. Uh, Joe Yesifu, Cam Martin, um, Zach Clements, sorry. Um, and I believe there was one more guy that I can't put my finger on right now. Because there was four. And now it's escaping me, and I didn't have it in my notes because I am foolish, I guess. But four Jayhawks have already entered the transfer portal. Um, and there's probably, and obviously, you got Jalen Wilson um, and Kevin McCuller both leaving. Um, there's no doubt about that. There is any tiny possibility that Grady Dick comes back. I would not rest my laurels on that. Um, it's quick to you guys, but he's more than likely going to the draft. Um, just overall, it's... Uh... Oh, Bobby Pettiford. Duh. My apologies. Uh, I cannot believe I forgot Bobby Pettiford. My, my sincere apologies to Bobby and all the Bobby Pettiford fans out there. Um, but there's still a possibility other... Jayhawks leave. I mean, MJ Rice is potentially a transfer. Um, I don't think Zubia Gia for or Ernest Rude are going to leave. And neither is KJ or any of the, you know, Dewan Harris. Uh, I don't think they're leaving. Hope not. <laughs> um, but I, you know, the exodus may not be done for KU. Um, obviously, Bill Self is. Kind of looking at his bench and saying, guys, where was the production this year? Um, and, I mean, this was one of the lowest producing benches in KU's history. And, uh, frankly speaking, it's no surprise that, you know, the guys are leaving for greener pastures, for one. Uh, but, two, that there's probably going to be a complete revamping of this KU roster. Um, it was an incredibly underwhelming year for how well they did in the regular season. And to go out like they did, I'm sure, really put a reality check on on this, this Jayhawk basketball team. Um, so that's kind of who is expect or who is potentially leaving and who has already left. There is a chance, though, given... KU's reputation that KU does really well in the transfer portal. Um, I saw a couple, I saw a list of transfer targets out there um, that I definitely liked. This is uh, from Kansas Jayhawk fans. Um, they are not affiliated with KU in any way. So this is not a for sure list of who they're looking at. Uh, obviously, Caleb Love from UNC uh, just declared for the transfer portal. I there, I, there's really not a spot on the roster for Caleb Love. They don't really need him. Um, potentially, could be a Remy Martin type ad though, uh, where it's kind of an ancillary thing, but it ends up being a really, really good move. Um, right now, uh, the top. Available transfer portal players according to rivals as of 326 2023. Um, and this is again what Kate Kansas Jayhawk fans on Twitter posted uh, at fans of KU. If you want to go check them out, um, Samir Nelson Jr., uh, Khalif Battle, Fair Dawes, Amat, uh, Graham EK, and Nicholas Timberlake. Um, Jameer Nelson's from Delaware. Khalif Battles from Temple. Amac is someone that KU is familiar with out of Texas Tech. Uh, Graham E.K. is out of Wyoming. And Nicholas Timberlake is out of Towson. Um, and Khalif Battle is the most intriguing name on that list right now, um, in my opinion. That and Amac. Um, Amac could potentially come in and be that set five piece um obviously you know we got Ernest Uday um that could potentially fulfill a starting role um but I I don't know if I fully trust Uday quite yet uh there's still a few things he has to work on and I don't think there are things that can really be improved in full after just 
one off season. Um, but you know, AMAC could be an interesting add. Uh, Khalif Battle, though, is definitely the one that I'm looking at. He could absolutely be a Jalen Wilson replacement. Um, he averages 17.9 points a game, uh, 3.6 rebounds a game, um, and is a 6'5 shooting guard. So that's pretty similar to Jalen Wilson's numbers, uh, obviously a little lower because if they were completely the same, uh, Khalif Battle would be up there for National Player of the Year. Um, but he he's made out a pretty solid sophomore. By the way, he's a sophomore. Um, but he made he made a really great sophomore season effort. Um, and we could get two years out there. KU could get two years out of him. Um, so I think that would be a good pickup there. Um, but I think KU is really going to be looking at that post presence um, because that's where they've thrived for a while now is that post play, uh, except for last year. Um, Post play didn't really, it, it existed in spurts. I mean, KJ Adams uh, definitely took a step up this year, um, and Ernest Uday looked really good um, in times, uh, but overall, just not nearly as good of post play as we've seen from Jayhawk teams in years past. So I think they're going to be looking for the bigs. Uh, in this transfer portal. Um, and then obviously, you know, you've got to fill the guard room again. Um, you've got quite a few really talented freshmen coming in uh, that could fulfill that spot. But, uh, you know, I, I really think you want a veteran presence uh, starting for you at least um, at the guard position. Um, let me look up something real quick, uh, because I need a full list of the KU incoming freshmen, just so I can kind of get that for you, because this is a list that's, you know, if you actually pay attention to rivals and all that, um, it's it's a solid list. Uh, KU's got some really good recruits. I think they listed them as the fifth ranked signing class, uh, which is really impressive. Um, let's go here. Maybe. Hmm. It's giving me... Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's the 2023 signing class. Okay. So, say you inked three recruits before the season. Uh, Chris Johnson, Jamari McDowell, and L. Marco Jackson. Um, Chris Johnson is a 6'4", 180 uh, guard. So, pretty solid uh, numbers from what I'm seeing. He's a 90, in, 90 even on rivals. Um and then Jamari McDowell, another shooting guard, and Marco Jackson is a point guard. So three guards there coming in already. Um, so that's good. And then you've got the addition of Marcus Adams Jr. as well, who is McDonald's All-American, which is also really good. He reclassified. Um, my apologies. I think just made a big old noise there. Um, but... We're going to continue on. My apologies. Um, <laughs> uh, but we kind of have a good sense of who the guy, who the guards coming off the bench will be for KU. Um, but I, again, I don't necessarily trust the freshman uh, to be in that shooting guard position. Uh, and if they're going to go four small, one big, it's kind of tough to determine who's going to fill roles that uh, Kevin McCuller filled, that Jalen Wilson, Grady Dick filled. Uh, right now, it's kind of, you know, Dewan Adams and KJ, or excuse me, Dewan Harris and KJ Adams um, filling those roles right now. Um, but 
That's KU. Let's move on to Missouri because we've already talked about KU for 10 minutes. Jeez Louise, I can talk about my alma mater all day. But that's not what you're here for. You're here for me to talk about KC Sports. Now get to the KC Sports. Not the KU Sports, the KC Sports. Mizzou. Let's talk about them. Uh, transfer targets for Mizzou. They picked up a kid um, from Colorado State that looked really good. I, he, I think, plays four. Um, but let me check and see here. Mizzou transfer. Let me grab that for you all really quick. Uh, but he's this kid from Colorado State that looked pretty good, that, you know, had competition that's uh, in the Final Four right now in San Diego State um, and could definitely make an impact. Uh, I mean, you look at how many people or how many players are leaving from Missouri basketball and – Boy, howdy, it's it's a lot. Um, and they definitely have to figure out who exactly is going to fulfill those roles. Uh, Kobe Brown's leaving. Um, you got Nick Honor leaving. DeAndre Golston leaving. Trey Chameleon leaving. Des Moy Hodge leaving. Um, Isaiah Mosley leaving. I mean, this... Ben Sternberg, who... Was their walk-on energy guy? Uh, he's leaving too, um, and it's it looks like a house cleaning for Missouri basketball. I mean, those those seniors made up the bulk of that starting roster, so they got a lot of work to do. Um, they got a solid recruiting class last I saw, um, but again, they're going to be another team that's going to look to add in the transfer portal, and they had a lot of success. Uh, this past year, um, obviously, because, you know, they, they took a huge step up um, from last year, made the tournament, you know, weren't anywhere close to last in the SEC, uh, and hopefully will make that second step to being towards the top of the SEC. Um, but with all that, with all those freshmen, or excuse me, with all those seniors leaving, it's kind of tough to determine where exactly Missouri basketball will end up. Um, you know, you've got a couple transfer targets to fulfill, again, basically an entire starting roster, um, which doesn't entirely bode well. Um, you want to see some development from some younger guys. Obviously, there are guys... I came off the bench this past year that will probably fill those starting roles pretty nicely. Um, but overall, there's a lot of seniors leaving from that Missouri basketball team. And Dennis Gates is going to have potentially a sophomore slump if he isn't able to recruit, if he isn't able to bring guys in from the transfer portal um, and can't develop the guys that are already there. So in my opinion, it's kind of the true test of Dennis Gates to see where exactly this Mizzou basketball team can go. Um, was it just kind of a fluke season or was it for real? Uh, I guess we'll just have to sit and find out. So, um, moving on to K-State though, um, K-State, I think their main worry is replacing Keontae Johnson and Marquise Noel, um, i.e. they're by far most productive players. Um, they're going to be tough. They're going to be tough to replace. Um, and they're going to be even tougher if Jerome Tang decides he wants to move on to greener pastures. I highly, highly, highly doubt he will. Uh, but there are rumors out there that have kind of been dispelled now that um, Rodney Terry has taken the Texas job. There's a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon to of Tang to Texas, Tang to Texas. And, you know, it's it was kind of in an ironic, facetious kind of ha 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 ha. You've got something good. Now you're going to lose it. Uh, you can guess where the Tang to Texas rumors came from, uh, from good old big brother uh KU. <laughs> um shout out to Mike Vernon. 
Um, but I, again, K State's another team that had a lot of senior production that will be hard to replace. Um, but can easily be done in the transfer portal. Um, they've got a lot of guys coming off the bench that are really solid. Uh, let me check and see who all exactly is, are the seniors on that team and who are, you know, the underclassmen. Um, you know, you've got King Carter who had a couple decent games. Um, you got, uh, Ismael Masood, who's a really good shooter and, you know, a big guy playing forward, um, who will definitely make an impact. Uh, Ngesson, who was their big this past year, David Ngesson, um, definitely an impact player. Um, and then Naquan Tomlin, who's also staying. So you've got... The decent bulk of that starting lineup coming back. Um, but obviously, you're going to be missing Keontae Johnson. You're going to be missing Marquise Noel. You're going to be missing Desi Sills um, and other guys that, you know, had huge production that really made an impact. Um, but I think, unlike, and I, well, I guess I don't want to say entirely unlike because Dennis Gates did prove that. He can win for sure. Um, but I think Jerome Tang proved that this K State team is for real and that he is here to stay as long as K State will let him. Um, I don't think talks of an extension need to be had just yet. Um, you know, obviously, yeah, I got to see how he does in his sophomore season. Um, but overall, I, I, I like K State going back to their winning ways this next year. Um, they got a lot of returners, um, and probably won't have to work that hard in the transfer portal. Much unlike Missouri and KU, um, so be on the lookout for K State to be in contender. Excuse me, a contender uh, once again. So be on the lookout for that. All right, on to the shirt sake. The Kansas City Royals. Um, Kansas City Royals, they kind of had a skid, uh, which doesn't bode well. Um, they kind of had a spring training skid um, after the World Baseball Classic. Uh, they're sitting at 19 and 12, still one of the better records in spring training. Uh, but they're not the spring training juggernaut that they uh, once were. Um, I think they are maybe settling into a regular season mode. Uh, you hope not. You hope not. Well, when we talk about regular season mode, with the Royals at least, um, <laughs> I think every Royals fan knows what I'm talking about in regard to regular season mode. Um you know, we're going to probably get a really good Royals team to start the year. You know, they're going to carry over their spring training successes and just be really, really good for you know, a couple weeks and then kind of fall off that cliff once they hit the midseason. And then by the All-Star break, they are effectively eliminated from the playoffs. But you hope you don't see that. Um, and, you know, the, the start of spring training – Kind of gave us a little bit of hope, um, and you hope that hope doesn't go away, um, because it's opening day week now, and it's time to put up or shut up. They're coming into games that matter now. Um, obviously, it's a very long season. It's 162 games, um, but you know it's it's kind of hard to determine how well this Royals team, excuse me, this Royals team is going to do this year. Um, and part of that is there's still a lot of question marks with the management, with the pitching, and with the health 
of this Royals program. Um, you lost a key rotational guy in Daniel Lynch. Uh, at least they're saying until May uh, is what I'm hearing around the block. Uh, that he's probably going to be out till May, and that's that's a key piece because he's a young guy that really well um, when he can't or you know when he's on. Um, and not to say that you know the Royals don't have other guys that can fill that spot until May, um, but it's not. It's not exactly a great sign when you got a bunch of guys on the IR before you even start the season. Um, and I'm not saying the Royals are a walking medical team or whatever you want to call it, the the injury the injury prone team or anything like that. They're not. Uh, but there was a couple guys on that list that um, you kind of want to see off the IR and uh, in the starting opening day lineup. Um, including Daniel Lynch, so that that doesn't entirely bode well. Uh, and I hate to be negative about the Royals because, frankly speaking, they're turning over a new leaf. They're they've got new management. They've got a new GM. The Dayton Moore era is over, but that leaves more rebuilding to do, and more rebuilding the Royals will do. Um. So I'm not entirely going to say that this is just going to be a wash of a season. It's not. Um, But uh, it's kind of hard to determine where the first-year managers will take this team of young, inexperienced guys and see how they run with them. Uh, Sometimes it can be really, really good. Other times it can be really, really bad when that happens. Uh, But I think the Royals have a great young core um, in Bobby Witt Jr., MJ Melendez, um, Benny Pasquantino, uh, and a whole host of other guys. Um, I saw earlier that the Royals farm system was ranked 29th out of 30, um, which I honestly think is not true um, because you're producing guys like Nick Prado, like... um, Bobby Witt Jr., like, um, you know, a whole host of other really good prospects. Um, And, you know, it's not a victory by any stretch of the imagination, but it's certainly not second to last, I think. Um, But, again, there's still a lot of questions to be answered about this Royals team. I think a lot of this Royals fan base is... Very, very, very cautious Um, because uh, we've done our fair share of waiting and seeing and we've done our fair share of, you know, being optimistic and then ending up getting disappointed. Um, So it'll be certainly interesting to see how these last couple of spring training games go as well as how opening day goes, Um, both on and off the field because you, you... You'll have to pay attention to attendance, too. Um, Obviously, the Royals are trying to get a new ballpark. Um, And right now, the K ranks 16th out of the 30 ballparks in the United States. And the reason being, USA Today uh, made this list, by the way. Um, USA Today ranks the Royals 16th mainly because of their location. Um, It being so far outside of the city. and really only being a a stadium that can be accessed by car or by bus and even the bus is kind of kind of tough honestly um and overall you know I can see the need for a downtown stadium but until the royals show that they are worthy of one it's kind of tough to determine um obviously there's going to be a lot of private funding but every stadium needs some sort of public funding and a lot of stadiums have majority public funding um and it'll all kind of depend i think at least on 
how much apathy grows for the Royals over the next couple of years, or how much of a fan base or how much how many fans the Royals garner back. Because I mean, I remember fourteen and fifteen. That's jerseys from. I don't know if you can read that, but that says postseason <laughs> in 2014. Um, it's uh, Tim Collins' jersey, by the way. Uh, legendary Royal. Legendary. Um, yeah, paid this paid, uh, this for uh, 75 bucks at a Royals Fan Fest back in uh, 2015, I think. Uh, it was pretty cool. Um, but anyway, uh, I digress. Um, the Royals... The Royals need to figure out how to win back their fans. Plain and simple. Um, and if they do poorly this year, you know, that's fine. I think everyone and their mother expects this Royals team to kind of, you know, be in a rebuild mode to where they can build this young core. And they're not going to be the best team in the AL. They're not going to, they're, they're probably not going to be the best team in the AL Central. Um, and they may not be a playoff team. Right off the bat. Um, Get it right off the bat. Uh, Sorry. Um, But it's kind of hard to determine where this Royals team is going to go and where this Royals fan base is going to go. I mean, you're still dealing with the Bali sports contract. Bali sports is about to go bankrupt. And you have 158... Of the 162 total games that the Royals are going to play this year, broadcasted on Bali Sports. A, a commodity, by the way, that you have to pay 70 bucks a month for. I pay for YouTube TV 70 bucks a month. And it's a thousand times better than anything Bali Sports can offer. ESPN Plus is six ninety nine. Like there's there's other options for the Royals. They need to move on. They need to break this contract. And it just uh, and it really goes to show. How it, it almost shows the writing on the wall for the Royals. Um, hey, we're losing fans. We don't care. Well, it, it just seems like they don't care. I mean, like, yeah, the downtown ballpark is going to be, you know, cool. You know, you can go to PL and then go catch a Royals game, but. Who's gonna want to catch a Royals game if they stink? Who's gonna catch? Who's gonna want to catch a Royals game if no one knows who any of the Royals are because no one can catch them on TV? I think there's bigger issues than the the, the downtown stadium, and there's bigger issues to put your money toward than the downtown stadium. And you know, this is the same thing that I talked about last year with the Royals. All he's got to go. Bali has to go. If you are going to save face with your fans, Bali has to go. I don't care how much money they're paying you. In all honesty, they shouldn't be paying you that much money because they're going bankrupt. So let them go. Anyway, I... That's the last I'm going to talk about the Royals. I'm, and I know I've been mostly negative about the Royals right now, but I'm excited for opening day. I'm excited to see how this young core develops, to see where Matt Quintaro and the new staff can take this team. I'm excited. I'm not anxious. I'm not, you know, pessimistic. There's just a lot of questions that still haven't been answered. and. We'll need answer. Excuse me. We'll need answering. So that's just kind of my view on what the Royals are dealing with right now. Because, frankly speaking, yeah, I'm a sports journalist, but I don't know these answers. I, I, I've done my research on the Royals, and uh, there's nothing out there that said that says you know, oh, the Royals know what they're doing. 
and there's nothing out there that says they don't know what they're doing. So it's just kind of tough to gauge. And it's what happens when you're not allowed to watch them on TV unless you pay 70 bucks a month to watch a crappy baseball team. Just come on. Come on. Anyways, moving on to a less crappy team in the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, Kansas City Chiefs, their offseason, I don't think has got well. We're getting right back into the negativity. My apologies. But the offseason, I don't think we'll we'll get out of it quick enough. Don't worry. Um, But the offseason just has not gone to, I think, at least, how many people viewed it would go. But that's okay. I think a lot of people are freaking out for no reason whatsoever. Regarding the Chiefs. You have to remember that. The Chiefs have one of the best. General managers. In football. This is a general manager that has brought this team. Two Super Bowl victories. Three Super Bowl appearances. Four. AFC championship. Appearances. Along with three wins. And five playoff appearances. For the past five years. That's really impressive. And. uh, To. uh, To automatically say well. They're going to have a rebuilding year. It brings back flashes. Of last year. When we traded Tyreek Hill. Only this time. It's Miko Hardman. And Juju Smith-Schuster. Miko Hardman and Juju Smith-Schuster didn't put up Tyreek Hill's numbers combined this past year. And the Chiefs still won the Super Bowl. Like, uh, people have to understand that the guys that are paid to do these these things know what they're doing 99.9% of the time. Um... And there's so much doubt among Chiefs Kingdom for for no reason. I mean, come on. Just because they let go of Frank Clark. Just because, oh, the Chris Jones extension hasn't been signed yet. We're going to get rid of Chris Jones, too. Oh, Orlando Brown wasn't signed. And now he's off to the Bengals. Screw him. Yeah, screw Orlando Brown. He stunk. He's not a top tackle. He had to have chip help every time. As a left tackle, you shouldn't have to have chip help. The left tackle is the second most important position on the offense. And he couldn't fulfill that position to the best of his abilities. Therefore, he got let go. He didn't get paid. And a lot of people were like, well, he's he's better than a lot of people thought, and blah, 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 and now we don't have a left tackle, and blah, 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 blah. Breathe for a second, if you will. Just breathe. She's brought on DeWan Taylor. DeWan Taylor. Who held Joey Bosa to zero sacks. Every time the Jaguars played the played the Chargers. If Jawan Taylor can keep back the division's best pass rusher, he's he's the division's best pass rusher. If Leo Mack is good, you know, Frank Clark was good. Chris Jones is good. But Joey Bosa was the best pass rusher in in the AFC West. Juwan Taylor held him to zero sacks. That automatic feeder scared the crap out of me. My apologies. Oh my goodness. Um, 
continuing on. <laughs> um, but yeah, Orlando Brown's not going to be missed. He's not. And if you do miss him, there's greener pastures ahead. I promise. There is. Do I think Jawan Taylor is going to do better than Orlando Brown Jr.? No, well, maybe. You know, or, I, I, I talk a lot about Orlando Brown Jr. being, you know, oh, he's terrible, he's terrible. I'm not saying he's terrible. I'm just saying he wasn't worth the pay of a top tackle because he wasn't a top tackle. Well, zero sacks allowed in the in the in the postseason. Blah 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 blah. That's not solely attributed to Orlando Brown. Go put it on a shirt. Put it on a shirt. You still got a ton of pressures in the postseason. You, Orlando Brown, did. That's a whole offensive line effort. Is he better than Andrew Wiley? Yeah. Andrew Wiley's gone too. So, yeah, the Chiefs will need to fill that right tackle position. But, frankly speaking, this is a good draft class for tackles. And in all honesty, if all else fails, I trust Darren Kennard to fill that right tackle position. Or um, uh, Lucas Niang, even. Lucas Niang's made a paper, but, I mean... I, I hate saying that about Lucas Niang because he was supposed to be really, really good, and he's he's shown flashes. He's just he's just fragile. I mean, and it stinks, but it's the business of professional football in saying that. Yeah, he's just a fragile guy, and that's what's holding him back. But um, just I think a lot of people freaked out completely irrationally. Yes, I know I just used two adverbs in a row. Sue me. Um, but a lot of people acted completely irrational about the Orlando Brown trade. And I think there's a lot of distrust, unnecessary distrust, when it comes to Brett Beach and company. Um, and I think a lot of people will be proven wrong if, number one, this draft class is good. And number two, if the long talked about the Andre Hopkins trade happens, do I think it's going to happen? There's a lot more hope than pessimism about it in my in in my opinion i think there's a lot of people that are saying yeah no the chiefs are the front runners i mean it looks like the best fit for them and there's a lot of rumors going around that are saying yeah no the chiefs are actively pursuing them you know he's he's just been given permission by the cardinals to go facilitate his own deals um it could happen there's that chance that it doesn't, and then you're kind of looking at your draft and your draft plan as Brett Veach and saying, okay, like, where do we go from here? But given Brett Veach's track record when it comes to the draft, I fully trust him. Um, I mean, you've got Zay Flowers. You've got Jalen Hyatt. You've got um, Jordan Addison if he's still there. Um, and a couple other really marquee wide receivers. You could trade up to get Jackson Smith and Jeeba, or if he's still there and you're willing to trade for him, Quentin Johnston. Even that's that would be a huge pickup because he's a big-bodied, quick wide receiver that can go up and get it. Um, but I I think he's a top ten pick, and I don't know if Leach is willing to. Push it that high um, to go from 31 to, you know, the top 10. I, I think there would be a lot that Beach would have to do to get up there. Um, but I, it, especially if the Chiefs don't get DeAndre Hopkins, I think they're going with wide receiver. Um, a lot of people, you know, are out there saying, well, pass rush, pass rush, blah, blah, blah. You still have George Karloftis. You have, you just signed Charles Omenowu who's 
really good pass rusher. I think a lot of people just kind of ignored the guys that were brought in for the defense. Mike Edwards, Drew Tranquil, uh, Charles Menohu. I mean, these these guys can ball. Drew Tranquil looked really, really good last year. I mean, he's a great coverage linebacker that can fly to the ball, too. Um, and that that's needed for the Chiefs. I mean, this that this the Chiefs have a stacked linebacking crew now. I mean, you've got Leo Chanel, you've got Drew Tranquil, you've got Willie Gay, you've got Nick Bolton. I mean, that's four really serviceable at at worst serviceable linebackers. And it I don't see why people are freaking out that the Chiefs probably won't be picking an edge in the first round. The only edge that I can see going off the board for the Chiefs in the first round is B.J. Ojolari or um, uh, Mike Nolan from Georgia. I mean, those are the only two that I can see are worth it. And, you know, a lot of guys are talking about, a lot of pundits are talking about uh, the kid from K-State, Felix. Um, my apologies. I'm not going to try and pronounce his last name because I'm going to butcher it. Um, but the, the Felix kid from, from Kansas state, he's a, he's a great pass rusher. He's a, he's a local too, which would be really cool. But I just, I, especially if that wide receiver need is still there. Once the draft comes around, I don't see the chiefs drafting a first round edge. I just don't. Um, but I'll be releasing a, um, I'll be releasing a new mock draft here pretty soon to kind of give you an idea on what exactly I'm looking at. Um, and I would love to see your guys' mock drafts as well, if you have any. Um, if you want to do one, I can put a link um, in either the description of this video or something like that um, to show you where I do mine. mine I do mine on Pro Football Focus. Um, I don't love pro football focus. I think their rankings can get kind of uh, kind of skewed. I don't think they use entirely data analytics to make their rankings. I think there's a lot that goes down there that just they don't take account for. But I've got a really good mock draft system. So I would suggest them. I'll put a link um, somewhere. If y'all want to do that, um, but overall, um, yeah, I think the Chiefs go wide receiver um, in the in the first round. Um, but we have a poll regarding the DeAndre Hopkins situation that I put out. Uh, that we'll go ahead and look at right now. So let's go do that. So, as you can see, number one, that Twitter poll got a lot of votes. That It did. It got a lot of votes, a surprising amount of votes, um, which thank you very much to everyone that voted in that one and to everyone that voted in the Instagram one as well. Um, this is important research-based analytics that I go over and kind of gauge to see what the what the um what my general fan base is feeling so uh thank you for voting and for being active community members your presence is appreciated um but it's pretty down the middle <laughs> in regards to do the chiefs end up with deandre hopkins uh, i think a lot of people are saying yes and a lot of people are saying no and i think a lot of people are leaning more towards yes than no now. Um, I think, I mean, obviously that, that poll was put out a week ago. So it, things happen fast in the NFL. Um, and obviously with all the hearings that I have seen on Twitter and across the NFL landscape, um, the Chiefs are the front runners and could very well 
land DeAndre Hopkins at this point. I mean, it's a real possibility. Um, and I think a lot of people were like, well, you know, he's a top 10 wide receiver. That He's not going to want to go to the Chiefs. Chiefs have the money for him. Chiefs have the draft capital for him. He's a good fit. And would give Patrick Holmes a top 10 wide receiver once again. He survived without him, yeah. But he's done pretty well with him, too. He did pretty well with Tyree Kill. Um, obviously, he uh, broke his uh, passing career high last year without him. Uh, but in my opinion, that's because he spread the ball around. And, you know, there's only so much you can do with Tyree Kill. Um, before the defense finally adjusts and goes, oh, hey, maybe we shouldn't let him throw it over our heads to him. <laughs> um, but I digress. As you can see, it was pretty even uh, when I posted this poll. I might, I might post it again, honestly, just to see uh, how, how, the, how the mood has changed. So um, thank you for participating again. Uh, it was a fun poll to look at and watch the numbers roll in. Um, and, yeah, again, this is better show when there's an active community around it. So, thank you. Um, one more piece of Chiefs news before we get into some Sporting Kansas City news and then kind of the rest of the rest of the show. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Y'all remember Chiefsaholic? Um, Xavier Bandahar, I think this is, uh, oh boy, ba, 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 ba. Xavier, gosh, what is his, or no, is it, is it Xander? Yeah, it's, no, it's Xavier Babudar, Xavier Babudar, my apologies, um, he's a criminal, so I don't really care if I butcher his name, uh, but, mm. eh. <laughs> um, Xavier Babadar, also known as Chiefs Aholic, uh, cut his ankle monitor and is now on the run. Um, if you don't remember, Chiefs Aholic was arrested for robbing banks to obtain money to go to Chiefs games and to place incredibly crazy bets on on Chiefs games. Um, he, I guess he cashed out his winnings and uh, um, while out on bail and cut his ankle monitor and is now nowhere to be found. And is now, he now has a $1 million bond posted towards his name. This story just keeps getting crazier and crazier, people. Um, it, when it first came out, I was like, dude, I've seen this guy at Chiefs games. This is this is a very popular Chiefs fan. And the fact that he did it in his wolf costume, and still no one caught him until very, very recently. It, it's unbelievable. And he, and he was doing it for a couple of years. <laughs> and uh, it's just, it's, 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 it's unfathomable. Um, that this is, I mean, this, this is going to get a 30 for 30. This is going to get a Netflix documentary or something. It has to. Um, and just the amount of crazy stuff that has happened with this case from him cutting his ankle monitor today, um, from him, you know, using his wolf mask to rob these banks. Um, I mean, it is it's 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 like something out of a dang movie. It's been, I mean, and it's it's it's. I don't want to say it's awesome because crime's not awesome. Please, um, whatever McGruff said or whatever, um, crime 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 doesn't pay. Um, but this is this is a crazy story, and now they got the FBI looking for the dude. I mean. Goodness gracious, it, it's, it, he loves his Chiefs, I guess, because, <laughs> again, that was his main motive for robbing banks, <laughs> and, and, oh my gosh, 
it's 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 unbelievable that this story has made a comeback <laughs> um and it's, it's absolutely going to be it has to be something at some point it has to be like a 30 for 30 come on espn do your thing so just a little tidbit of uh, chiefs news that uh, isn't based around the off season so all righty moving on to sporting kansas city oh my goodness can y'all score a goal please just just one and i know and i know well they've scored one already give it a rest when you allow one guy they lost four to one this past weekend one guy scored all four of the opposing team's goals. I, I think it was FC Dallas that they were playing. I, I can't remember. It, it, it was I th- it was a Texas team. I, kn- I know that. Um, oh, I guess the USA is playing El Salvador. That's cool. Um, but in a in a men's friendly. My apologies. I digress. But. Uh, when one guy scores more goals than you have in your entire season thus far, there's a huge problem. And, uh, I mean, what needs to change is kind of the big question that needs to be answered here for Sporting Kansas City. Uh, I mean, does there need to be different positioning? Does there need to be guys in the attack that are better goal scorers. I mean, if you have better goal scorers on the team, um, you know, does there need to be a more experienced attack? I mean, you've got Graham Zuzi up there, who is the longest in, I think at least the longest tenured sporting Kansas city player. And they still can't do anything. I mean, it, it, it is so frustrating. To, and I've only watched, snippets of sporting kansas city games this year because i just i can't sit through a televised soccer game i just can't um but well unless it's an exciting you know soccer game like the world cup or something like that but again i'm digressing my apologies um but does there need to be a picked up tempo for the offense like there's going to need to be a coaching change even. I'm not necessarily talking about pre- Peter Vermees leaving, but does that need to happen? I mean, this is this is just a repeat of last year's mistakes, only worse. I mean, it doesn't look like they've done really any building at all. In fact, it's, 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 it's kind of deteriorated. Uh, does the old guard finally need to retire? Does guys like Johnny Russell, um, Graham Zuzi, and all those guys, do they need to make way for the young guys? I mean, do you put those young guys in and see what they can do? Um, it's kind of hard to determine, and frankly speaking, there's there's really there's not a whole lot of solutions when it comes to you know, oh, you got to score more goals. Well, that's an obvious, very broad statement, but there's the, the Sporting Kansas City just needs offense. I mean, they've got the possession time. They've got the time in the opposing team's half. Where are the goals? <laughs> um, overall, just just really disappointing start to Sporting Kansas City's season. You hope it turns around. Um because you know how good this team can be. Uh, this is when the when they're on, they're one of the MLS's best. But when they're off, like they are this year, it's just a rough go. I mean, it it, it just looks bad. I mean, uh, I've I've looked at the possession times, and it's just like here's Sporting Kansas City. Here's the other team. Yet somehow, some way, it still ends in a 3-0 win for the other team. So I, what gives? Anyway, that's enough of a uh, sporting Kansas City. We'll 
we'll talk more on them later. Uh, hopefully, once they uh, become good again. So that's enough. All right, going into some other news here. Uh, let's go to some Blues news first. Uh, Blues are going to be in Dallas this Saturday. Uh, they'll be playing the Dallas Harlequins. Uh, going to be a good Division II match up there. The Harlequins are a solid Texas rugby program, and they can do some damage. Uh, but so can the Blues. And so that'll be a great game. Um, looking forward to seeing the results of that. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of kind of seeing what the, 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 the first game will look like for the Blues. Um, it, there's been a lot of a culture change. Or excuse me, there's been a lot of culture change uh, with the Blues. Um, over this past couple of months, and you want to kind of see it come to a head uh, with this first game and seeing how how well this team can play. Um, so that'll be really exciting. Um, there was a collegiate sevens tournament hosted this past weekend uh, that both KU K State Bene- well KU K State Benedictine. Uh, and I think Fort Wayne was the other team, or not Fort Wayne State, um, Wayne State, just Wayne State uh, from Nebraska. Um, they participated in that, uh, and let me see who won that. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, UCM, Air Force, um, and Southern Nazarene. Uh, were in there uh, air force ended up taking the title um so congratulations to them um it was oh yeah and missouri was there too jeez Louise. um but air force ended up winning that game um missouri came second uh the third fourth matchup was central missouri and southern nazarene um unfortunately ku and k-state didn't do all that well um mm-hmm. but uh, it's sevens. I mean, anything can happen. Uh, special thanks to the Kansas City Rugby Club, not the Blues, uh, the, but the Kansas City Rugby Club that is located in KCK for hosting that tournament uh, at Indian Hills Middle School up in Prairie Village. Um, wish I could have made it out, but unfortunately I had some family obligations um, that I had to tend to, um, so I couldn't make it. Um, then the Kansas women's basketball team, um, they made the women's NIT Final Four. Congratulations to the KU women's team. Um, they will be playing Washington um, for that Final Four spot. Uh, they, or excuse me, for the title game spot um, here this next weekend um they'll be playing that game at allen go watch it if you haven't watched this kansas women's team already please do so they're really good they got snubbed out of a tournament spot and frankly speaking i hope they can prove this committee more wrong than they've already been proven wrong if it's the same committee selecting the men's and women's teams at least if it is, please do so because they already they already screwed up the men's team. Let's go ahead and uh, prove prove the women's division wrong too. Um, but they they ended up beating Arkansas uh, in a bit of a kind of a revenge matchup uh, there. Um, kind of a revenge game for the football team and the men's basketball team. Uh, so it was, finally get a win over the. Uh, Razorbacks of Arkansas. So, and then finally, uh, the current had their uh, opening game. They unfortunately lost one to nothing against North Carolina. North Carolina is a good team, so I and it was one nothing. So I wouldn't think too much of it. Um, but this next game against the Portland Thorns, uh, this is the team that beat them in last year's championship. Uh, this is going to be a Great game. It's going to be a great home opener. If you can make it out to that one, please do so. It's going to be at uh, Children's Mercy Park 
uh, where SKT plays. Um, so definitely make it out to that one when if you can. Um, because current games, they're a lot of fun. I highly, highly recommend them. So um, that's our show for today, though. Thank you all for joining me on this late edition of the Scorchcast. Um, I almost said Sunday Scorchcast, but obviously it's not Sunday, so it's not the Sunday Scorchcast, but normally it is. Come on. <laughs> Cut me a break here. I'm a busy man. Um, but again, that's our show. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, Going to be releasing a Scorching Takes segment. Uh, for you guys to give your best takes on. So please do that. Uh, I always look forward to seeing what kind of takes you all got for me to talk about. Um, there's very, very solid takes most of the time. Sometimes they can get kind of a little crazy. Uh, but overall, pretty, pretty good takes um, that you all have um, that I can pontificate over. Um, but overall, thank you, uh, for participating in that. Again, active community makes this a better show. So please participate. Please give your best answers, your best questions, your best hot takes to my show. So I can give my best answer. Anyway, for the third time, <laughs> that's our show. Uh, Thank you for joining me. Um, Sunday, Sunday should be released as normal as long as nothing comes up. Um, so just be on the lookout for that. But this has been The Burn KC. I have been Alex Blackburn. Have a great week. Have a great night. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I shall see you next week. Thanks.